Hey traders, this week I've launched a brand new trading strategy on Arrow Algo that's achieved a 30% return in one month in backtest. So what's the secret? It's on XRP. Now that's not the secret, but it is important because I'm not only going to explain what the strategy is, but also why it works. And it's to do with the token economics for XRP. That's the reason why it's possible to make such good short-term returns on this asset. If you keep watching to the end of the video, I'll show you how you can replicate this for yourself for free. So let's dive in. Now, those that know me know that I'm generally very bullish on the long-term potential of XRP. I spent 11 years in the banking industry, my first-hand experience of the headaches caused of dealing with the SWIFT messaging system and having to manage billions of pounds, dollars and euros that sit idle across correspondent and custodian Nostro and Vostro accounts, just in case it's needed to settle a transaction. The concept of on-demand liquidity and liquidity pools will be a game-changer across the industry. And what I really like about Ripple, the company, is the journey that they've taken. They didn't try and overthrow the system, like the Bitcoin maxis who want to cut out all the central intermediaries and act solely peer-to-peer. -peer. Instead, Ripple worked with the central banks, the regulators, the key advisory bodies that really steer the financial industry globally. They asked the question, how can we leverage this technology to find a practical way to solve a real problem? As much as I'd love to do a whole video just talking about XRP and the use cases, who will be using it, who won't be using it, which banks and central banks have publicly declared partnerships and which ones might have NDAs in place. I could talk about this subject for hours. What I'm really interested in here for this video and for my short-term algorithmic trading strategies is the token economics. Now I know that a lot of the XRP army are gonna be quick to point out to me that the cross-border payments isn't the only use case and there are hundreds of other interesting projects being developed on the XRP ledger. But payments is one of the main ones and a big part of the token economics. XRP was designed to solve a trillion dollar problem if it's going to be a central reserve currency or some kind of global bridge currency for institutional transactions, then it needs to have a huge supply and a large value. If you look at Bitcoin, there's about 19.5 million Bitcoins in circulation. With the halving protocol, the maximum amount of Bitcoin that can ever be mined is 21 million. So there's a fixed supply, which creates scarcity. So it's like a commodity in this sense, with only small amounts mined for each transaction or each block. In contrast, transactions on the XRP ledger are validated through a consensus protocol. There is no mining. All the tokens were pre-mined at the Genesis block, which makes it a lot more environmentally friendly and sustainable. The total supply of XRP is about 100 billion coins. Now that's a huge amount, I know. 45 billion is locked up in an escrow account owned by Ripple, the company. They release these in tranches programmatically as and when they need to sell them to new institutions that join the network. So this means that there's only 55 billion in circulation. Now, how much of that is being actively traded on exchange and secondary markets that the likes of me and you would have access to? That's not totally clear. It's possible that significant amount are being held aside by these institutions ready for the liquidity pools for when they start using the settlement technology in anger. Now, the reason that this is important is that the price of XRP at the moment is very low, at 65 cents. When you start to work out all the economics of all the transaction volumes across all the asset classes that potentially could settle over the XRP ledger in the future, we'll start to talk about some very big numbers. So even with a huge supply of coins, the price can't be this cheap. It was designed to be much higher. Full-scale institutional adoption isn't here yet though. A lot of governments and central banks are still working out their legislation and their regulations for central bank digital currencies and distributed ledger technologies. We are getting closer. Pilot programs and research papers are being dropped left, right and centre. Some of the conspiracy theorists that wear tinfoil hats on their heads said that the Securities and Exchange Commission in the US only sued Ripple to slow down the progress so that US banks could have a chance to catch up or develop their own alternative solutions because they were worried about the threat posed by this new technology to the incumbents. Although I'm not getting into that debate here. What's important is that you have this massive imbalance of supply and demand. There's a large supply of this asset which in the future may well have a huge demand, but for now, it doesn't. So all the supply outweighs the demand and it's very undervalued. Those that do hold it, hold large quantities of it in anticipation of its future utility. So when they transact, they aren't moving small amounts. So what happens when you get large buys and sells across an undervalued asset that has such a supply and demand imbalance? Will you get big short-term price swings followed by quick corrections? You only need to look at the price charts to see this activity. It's not uncommon for the prices to shift 10, 15, 20% in a single day in either direction. If you look at the weekly charts, you can see a lot of these types of trading candles with these long wicks and short bodies. Because throughout the week, 
the price has shot up to the top and sunk right back down, or vice versa. But ultimately, it doesn't end up moving too far away from where it started. If we zoom into the daily chart, you can see this again. It's common for the difference between the daily high and the daily low to be more than 10% of the value of the asset. So you get these big long wicks, which tell us the story that during the day, the transaction or a number of transactions have pushed this price right to the top or pulled it right back down to the bottom, but then it's quickly corrected back to the middle of the range. So how can we take advantage of these big movements? Well, here's my secret. This is actually a very simple strategy. Believe it or not, I've only got two sets of rules in it. Some of you that watched my $1,000 trading challenge commented that you were a little overwhelmed by the complexity of the scenario. In contrast though, this is extremely simple to understand and you can easily replicate it. As ever, the strategy has been built on Arrow Algo. It's our free algorithmic trading software that you can use to build trading strategies on a simple blog builder. You don't need to know how to write code, you can backtest as much as you want and you can run them live on your exchange for free. It's easy to learn, there's a ton of resources and support available. I'll leave a link in the description below. So the first rule of this trading strategy is based on the whole moving average and the average true range. If you've seen my video on these, then you know that the whole moving average is a weighted moving average that focuses more heavily on the recent data, which makes it very reactive, combined with the average true range, which is a volatility indicator. Let's take a look back at my previous video on this. ATR is a volatility indicator that helps us understand the market's price movement over a given period. But it's not just about directional movement, it's about the range of price swings. It looks at the differences between the high and the low point of each trading candle and gives us the average of these indicators over a set period. Let's break it down. So in the example here, you can see that there's a period at the start of this chart where there are some relatively big candles with large differences between the high and the low price. So the ATI here is relatively higher. Later as we move across the chart, however, you can see the price start to consolidate and we have a larger number of small candles and this is reflected by the ATR decreasing in value. That reminds me, I need a haircut. So by combining the two rules, we're looking for the price to be shooting above or below the whole moving average in a short time frame, i.e. on a 15 minute chart, but we're also looking for a sharp increase in the ATR value. If we see this, then we know that there's been one of these quick movements and there's likely going to be a correction back down again so we can set a buy or a sell order immediately to take advantage of these quick movements. As you can see here, I'm feeding the 15 minute price into the whole moving average block and have a condition block seeing whether the 15 minute price is above or below the HMA. I'm also feeding the high, low, open and close price into the average true range block and feeding the output into a condition block where I'm checking whether it's risen above or below a fixed value. In this case, I'm looking for 0.013. For the second rule, Again, I'm looking at price action, but I'm also taking into account the trading volume. I'm doing this using the Klinger Volume Oscillator. This is a new trading indicator for my channel. If people are interested in it, then let me know, drop me a comment below. I can do a deep dive if that's what people want to see. The KVO is a tool used to understand the relationship between the price and the trading volume. Imagine you're in a crowded market where people are buying and selling goods. The KVO detects how many people are actively trading and whether they're buying or selling. When lots of people are buying and the price is going up, KVO shows a positive value, indicating strong buying pressure. Conversely, when there are more sellers than buyers and the price is going down, the KVO shows a negative value, signaling selling pressure. Now here's where it gets interesting. The KVO doesn't just look at the volume and price changes individually. Instead, it compares them over time to spot trends and potential shifts in market sentiment. The way I've deployed it here is by checking whether the KVO is above its moving average. I've also combined it with a super trend to see whether there's generally a bullish or a bearish trend as well as checking we're in the right position within the Bollinger Band and that we've got a favorable RSI. In simple terms, like I talked about in my trading indicator video, I have one trading indicator from each of the main four categories. I'm looking one for volume, one for trend, one for volatility, and one for momentum, with complementing information and not conflicting. If we tick all four boxes, then I'll create another signal to buy. Just like in my Bollinger Band strategy, I'm going to look to see whether the price has risen above the upper band line in the previous candle through this lag block and this condition block, and then dip back down below the upper band through this condition block here. We're also looking for some overbought conditions through this relative strength index block. Finally, I have a stop loss in. If my scenario is more than 5% down at the end of any five minute candle, and the hourly trend is showing big downward pressure by being below this long-term moving average, then we're gonna exit the trade. So there you have it. This is a very simple strategy. And if we take a look at the back test results, you can see that in a one month period, we got on average about one trade a day, 
we had a winning probability of 61% and a 30% return. So I'm pretty happy with this. Remember, however, that this is just one backtest. It's important to thoroughly backtest your strategy across a range of market conditions and timeframes to get a holistic view of your strategy's capability. I've made this available for you to download in our algo. It's free right now, but you know that if we start making some gains and getting some track record in there, I'm gonna put the price up. So if you wanna get it for free, then you better go and subscribe to it quickly. How would you improve my strategy? Let me know in the comments below. I'm running it live now, so I'll post some updates along the way when it buys and when it sells, and we can track the progress together. Until then, happy trading and see you next time.